Okay, so those are some examples here. Here I've got another one. So this is uh, cosecant. I've got a binomial here. I've got a binomial in the numerator. Those seem to be okay. However, I've got a denominator here. I suppose I could put that into the denominator as well. Okay, so that can end up in the denominator. Okay, so how am I going to... What are some... So I've got some options here. Uh, I probably want to maybe make this into a fraction. So let's... And again, there are many different ways to do it. So this is just... I'm just kind of thinking of some strategies and applying a strategy. So I'm going to get a denominator here. Okay, and I'm going to, I don't really like that cosecant squared. So I'm going to change that to 1 over sine squared. Okay, so that's another strategy is getting rid of the, those inverse or the reciprocal trig and the quotient functions. Okay, so there's what I have so far. Oh, this is kind of nice because I have a divide by sine squared here, which matches a divide by sine squared here. So I'm going to start making the denominators look the same. So I need to have, have sine squared in both uh, terms. So I'm just going to multiply by sine squared over sine squared. So that will give me my sine squared in the denominator. Okay, so then... There's my sine squared factor of the denominator. Okay, now those match. I'm not going to mess with that piece anymore because those two pieces match. So what do I have in the numerator? I'm going to end up with 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, so where do I go from here? Well, this is a trig identity. This is a Pythagorean identity and that is a conjugate of that same identity. I think I'm on the right track. What I can maybe do is I can generate that numerator and get the numerator same or I could take another strategy and say well I can make these denominators match by multiplying the top and bottom by 1 plus sine x. Both cases are going to give me, both strategies are going to give me difference of squares in the numerator. So whether I'm trying to make, generate the Pythagorean identity in the numerator, which is a strategy, or getting a common denominator, right, of this sine squared times one, one, sorry, this is plus, one plus sine x, okay, those are the same strategy, or sorry, different strategies, but the same result. We're gonna multiply by one plus sine on top and bottom. I end up with one minus sine squared over sine squared x, 1 plus sine x. Okay, that equals the right-hand side. Left-hand side equals right-hand side. Check. That is now proven. And again, this is just one of infinite possibilities. You may have come up with something completely different, but that's okay. As long as you, your algebraic steps are clear and you're not making up some weird steps, once you do some, make one algebraic mistake, you're done. There's no, you can't, you've gone from a identity that could have been proved to one that is impossible to prove unless you make another mistake. Okay, and two mistakes, you know, do not make your identities better. They make your identities worse. Okay, so here's another one here. I've got this monomial term here. I've got a binomial plus this extra term. So I've actually got three terms there. So how can I maybe try to resolve that. Well, maybe one of my strategies here is, again, maybe I'm going to convert this to sine and cos. Okay. I have now, well, look, the cos t and cos t in the denominators match. I need to maybe, I have one fraction here and I have two fractions here, two terms here. So I'm going to make that into a common denominator and just combine it. Okay. And so, once I do that, this actually solves itself pretty easily because I get sine t minus cos t okay, plus cos t over cos t, which is 1. Well, those two cancel out. Okay, and then I'm going to end up with sine t over cos t equals the right-hand side. Again, identity is proven. Okay, this, 
That's again, just one of many ways we can do this, but the strategy here was convert it to sine and cos, get a common denominator on both sides. So I made one fraction on this side, but combining all that together. And by doing that, it just ends up resolving itself. We may not have seen that's gonna happen, but as when we start using these strategies and try to take steps towards these strategies, the other parts end up working themselves out. Okay, so uh, let's move on here. So here I have one fraction, I have two fractions. So let's just put those fractions into one big fraction. So sine squared t plus, that's gonna be a Pythagorean identity. Those are conjugates, one minus cos squared t. And that's all over the common denominator of sine t, one minus cos t, okay? All right, so I've now at least got one the fraction one fraction equaling one fraction. Notice that I have a sine t factor that also matches, so I probably don't want to mess around with that too much. Okay, and so what now? Well, a couple things. I could try to make that into a common denominator. I can maybe see if I can use a Pythagorean identity. In fact, these two are the exact same thing. Okay, they are both equal to one minus cos squared t. In fact, maybe that would, might not be a bad idea because I need two of something. Well, I have two of the same thing here. So I'm gonna maybe do that. I'm gonna make that one plus or one minus cos squared t plus one minus cos squared t. Okay, and that means I actually have two of those things. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite this as two and one minus cos squared t. Okay, well, this is a conjugate of that. Okay, so we can factor that and we can actually cancel out conjugates. So that would generate a one plus cos. Uh, a strategy we already talked about was getting a common denominator, which is what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna get a common denominator. I'm gonna go one plus or one minus cos t on bottom, one minus cos t on top. There's my common denominator. Well, when I multiply this together, well, I generate my Pythagorean identity there. So I end up with two, one minus cos squared t over sine t, one minus cos t. Left side equals right side. Okay, there's my proof.